So go ahead and click in B15. I'm on page 118. And this is insert a function. And this is statistical information, finding the average, the maximum, and the minimum based on the data from the quarter one, quarter two, and so forth. So to find the average, which means to find um, all of the numbers here, add them all up, and divide by as many as there are, and we are not including the total. So it'll be from Boston to Vancouver, add them all up, and divide by as many as there are to find an average. So to do that, you're going to do what's called insert a function. And if you ever hover over in the formula bar, the FX, it's an insert function. And then from your select a function, you're going to look for average. So I'll just scroll up a little bit. And if you don't see it, um, for some reason mine's not on the correct category, we can choose statistical. And there it's the second one, average. And then go ahead and click OK. And for the number one, what we want to do is find out what the range is. So you're going to click This is called a collapse button, so you're going to click that. And then you're going to select the range, and it's B4 through, remember not to take the total, B12. And you can see it over in the B15. Then we'll close the collapse, and it should say, number one, we're looking for the range for the cells B4 through B12 to find the average. And there you have it. In 16, I know you could look here and find the, the maximum in this one. It would probably be 170 for Houston. But we're going to do, if this was a, a huge list, you'd want Excel to find the maximum number for you. So in B16, pressure equals, and then just type the letter M, and you should see max. So go ahead and double click that, and it already fills it in for you, and it's got the parentheses started. You just select the range. Make sure you don't take the total. And then you actually don't have to have the closing parentheses. Once you press enter, Excel puts it in for you. And then the next one is the minimum. And again, you could look and find the minimum is probably 78. But we'll go ahead and do equals. M again, but this time look for minimum. Double click. And the same range, B4 to B12. And enter. And you should have 78. So now to get that for the next for the four quarters. If you select B15 and all the way down, you can do all three at the same time. Go to the little corner right hand side of the fill handle and drag across. So now we're going to work with worksheet views. So click in A1, in cell A1. And look over on the bottom right hand side, that's called your status bar, and right now it's at 120%. So now you'll click the View tab at the top of your screen, and then you'll choose 100%. So it changed it from the 120. If you wanted to go back to the 120, this plus sign works in increments of 10, so if you click it twice, it takes you back to the 120. Then we're going to click the Page Layout tab, which is in the Workbook view. So go ahead and choose Page Layout. And what happens is it makes it a lot larger. You have an area if you wanted to put in a header. Uh, but what it also does, not only are the columns labeled, but it has a ruler above it for the horizontal ruler. And then over on the left-hand side, there's a, a vertical ruler. So if you uncheck it, it takes that ruler off so it's not so confusing. And then we'll also remove the, the lines that you see on the worksheet by unchecking grid lines. So now the lines are gone. I don't know why I prefer to see the lines. Now what we'll do is we'll click Page Break Preview. So this, this gives you a preview, not to be reading, but to see how it fit on a worksheet. And you can actually go over to the bottom of it where it changes to double arrows and drag it to row 20 just to give a little bit more space on the bottom there. And then we'll click back to page layout. And we'll put the ruler back on and the grid lines back on. And then we'll go back to normal view. Select cell A20 and type your name and press enter.
and then we'll click the page layout tab at the top, not the one in the view, which is with the worksheet. We're actually going to click the tab that's labeled page layout. And then we'll go to orientation and we'll change it. Right now you can tell it's grayed out that it's landscape. We'll choose portrait. And then we'll go back to orientation and change it back to landscape. Just following the book. And then we'll click the grid lines so they print. So grid lines, we want them to print when it's time to print. And then we'll go to file and click print. We're not printing yet. We're just getting a preview of it. So right now this is in landscape. I would prefer to show you that last feature here rather than um, in the, so you can see what happens. So if I choose landscape orientation and choose portrait, it turns it so it's the, the standard eight and a half by 11. And then this is the landscape view. So it turns it on its side. So that's where I would have showed you. So then before we print, we're gonna go to page setup because you, if you notice it's up in the left-hand corner of the page. How would it, it would be nicer if it was brought down to the middle of the paper and moved over to the middle of the paper, both horizontally and vertically. So click the green page setup and you can see that we've chose landscape. We're going to click margins and right here if you choose center on page horizontally, this is our preview and this is what's going to happen. It's centered it horizontally and now we'll choose vertically and then we'll click OK. And then we would actually print it this time but what we're going to do is just click save because we already gave it a name. So we'll click save and then go ahead and submit it into uh, send gauge and you'll get your results. Thank you.